Hey guys, welcome back to FIFA 23 Brighton career mode. And well, I just came back from uh, just came back from football. Guess what? I stubbed my toe. You know, I'm trying to make a, a fancy little pass with my outside of the foot. I thought I was going to make the pass with the outside of my foot, but turns out, um, I just my body just couldn't really coordinate what I wanted to do, or at least my foot didn't quite coordinate what I wanted to do. Instead, I tried to poke the ball uh, to my teammate. And from that moment on, you knew something was up. After I poked it, it hurt. Um, I think I got subbed off in the last five minutes. And then could, couldn't really, really walk. And I was kind of fearing was I, uh, you know, broke my toe. So it turns out, uh, it took me two hours to get home. I took out my socks, and it was bruising under my uh, under my toe. Just a little bit of a uh, bleeding under uh, underneath it. I'm sure it was just a stubbed toe, but still, it hurts a lot. Again, I st I think every time when I play football, I just can't really catch a break. Last time, I think I twisted my ankle just a slightly bit. And today, stub my toe again. I don't know if I will be able to play next week. Hopefully, I do because I do love the game. So back to the uh, video right here. Back to the gameplay against Manchester City. Uh, this is a very, this is a very, very uh, normal saying. I remember back then, in the uh, early 2000s, Arsenal, uh, Patrick Vieira said this quote: uh, "If you want to win the league, you will have to beat Manchester United." And right now, in real life, if you want to win the league, you have to beat Manchester City. And right there, we beat them 3 nothing. I mean, hmm, are we indicating something in a way? Beating them 3 nothing comfortably at home. Even though it's still very early in the season, but still we are, even though after, uh, after a devastating loss last time against, was it Fulham? Yeah, against Fulham last time. Um... Uh, well, we're still sitting at second right now with 18 points, which means Chelsea is currently still sitting at the top of the league table with 21 points. And again, they are a very good team on FIFA. On real life, we, we're not quite sure about that. I'm right here, traveling away this time to West Ham. I remember uh, when I first play in the uh, in the stadium. Uh, I forgot the stadium of West Ham United now. Um, I remember they have they have you know bubbles everywhere. I remember that one. It's quite annoying. It took them what 15 minutes into the game to remove that one, or at least naturally you know burst all the bubbles. But again, the big topic right here is Skamaka against West Ham, his former team. Again, in real life, I believe Skamaka is currently injured at the moment. But guess what? Who cares? In the game, we are completely obliterating uh, West Ham. And even though right here, 32nd minute, just very poor defending at the back right there. I'm sure the game didn't quite know what I wanted to do with the defender. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I slid in there. But still, well, 37 minutes right here. Um, again, West Ham with a uh, with a lot of through ball pass. Estupinan, I don't know. I don't, I'm not quite sure what he's doing. Or I don't know what Andika was doing. Trying to run away from the ball instead of giving option for Estupinan. And Paqueta scores the equalizer right here. 2-2, 55th minutes right here. Building from the back. This is what we're very good, uh, very good at. Again, uh, through the middle pretty much to Gilhart, to Lamptey on the right-hand side. Crosses in the middle to Skamaka, and he completes a hat-trick within 60 minutes in. And I'm sure that $73 million that I signed for him was quite worth every penny. And this is what we want, to be honest, from a team like this. Yes, it is a quite a quite a expensive transfer. I know I have Sesco and also Gilhar and even Mateta on the team, but we need a very good third choice striker. Well, in the game, he do consider himself as a first choice first choice striker, but to me, he is kind of our uh, third choice striker at the moment. I mean, Joe Gilhar has been amazing again. Uh, the the ability for him to shoot with his left foot. Certainly going to add a little bit more sparks into his game. And also Sesco. I just can't drop any of them at the moment. 
But right there, yes, I did drop Joe Gilhart. I mean, Skamaka scoring a beautiful game. I mean, scoring a hat trick against his former team. You would just have to you ju you just have to uh you just have to put him in the next game. I mean, there's no there's no uh, there's no way about it. There's no doubt about that, and there's no excuse about that either. And right now, traveling away. Uh, from home against uh, KRC Genk, uh, the Belgian side right here. Again, I believe they beat. Uh, I, I believe they beat Barcelona at one point in the team or in the group stage. And right now, um, or they beat. Uh, I think Marseille was it. I think it was Marseille. And right here, 32 minutes in, couldn't really get any chance in the first half, unfortunately. But 33 minutes in, we were just being torn apart right there. Just a simple one-two play between the attackers. Uh, I know we have five defenders in the back there, but at times our defending can be very, very bad. We didn't really have another chance until 82nd minutes right here on the first of losing this game because again losing this game would probably uh well probably not gonna be the best thing in the world to be honest. 84 minutes in here come Lamptey, great dribbling uh to Hloshek to Sesko to Skamaka and I have no clue how Sesko finds Skamaka in that tiny bit of space right there, but Skamaka scores the uh, the equalizer it looks like the game has already ended based on the animation which is something that I don't, I don't i don't really like and here comes krc jank on the right hand side they might potentially probably find a winner in the last two minutes here good save right here by martinez uh i will be devastated if we somehow letting that go in 89 minutes right here. You guys can see Arno Martinez dropping down to the right-hand side, making himself free on the right-hand side so nobody could catch him. And again, this youngster, good dribbling on the right-hand side. Again, very pacey, and he keeps on going to Alex Scott. And look at him, scoring the winner. Woo, what a game right here. What a game. I don't think I... I think this is probably one of the best game I've played so far. I mean, we didn't really stood a chance until 82nd minute. Scoring an equalizer. And a great save by Martinez. A corner kick from uh, KRC Jank. And we hit them on a counter attack. And Alex Scott. And yes, uh, there's something that I kind of neglated earlier in this episode. It's that Fabio Vieira. It's out with a broken toe. Kind of similar to my situation right here uh, with a stub toe, but I'm sure in the game they, of course, they uh, they glorify the injury sometimes. But Alex Scott again, third choice, uh, third choice central attacking midfielder. I was contemplating whether if I should sell him or not, but thank God I didn't sell him because uh, you know this is why we have depth in the squad. Yes, Fabio Vieira is out for three months. Uh, he is most likely going to make him return in January or February. But we have Hoshek to step in. And also, we do have Alex. Got 78 rated, 20, what, about 22 year old. Again, I'm sure his potential has pretty much has been reached. And this is what I like about FIFA at sometimes. When you don't use a player who has a great potential. It is going to uh, detriment their uh, the potential in general or the overall rating, and this is exactly what I uh, and what I did to Alex Scott. Didn't get a lot of game time since I first signed him back in season one or season two. Again, uh, I, I thought his um, you know I thought his rating could go a little bit higher. Look at this right here, Adam Kloschek decided to uh, slid in right there. I didn't think the challenge was that bad, but I mean, looking at how. Look at the look at the slow replay right there. I mean, the number three, uh, the number three player. I mean, turned just in time in order to uh, kind of deceive the referee. In 63 minutes in, we were one, down by one, going also down by one player as well. We thought, you know what, mm, the game might be a little bit more tougher than we thought. It's going to be playing with 10 men, scoring an equalizer. Sesco with a tap in and later on here comes Skamaka carrying on an injury. Oh freaking no. But 86 minutes in. This guy. This guy. I don't know if uh, I forgot which team that I signed him for. They might think it's a scam. Because Skamaka has been amazing. Scoring what? Scoring hat trick. 
away against his former team and right here scoring a winner in the last 5-10 minutes against Wolves especially with the with the situation that we were at uh, playing with 10 men uh, going a goal down is not the easiest place to do that and we did a mannequin challenge to fulfill the whole game but 2-1 was the final score and what a great way to end this video on a super high, winning all four games in general. But for Brighton, in the group stage, Group F, we are taking at the top right there with six points, beating both our Marseille and also uh, KRC Jank to, uh, to overtake Barcelona. But for us in the Premier League, still we are still waiting for Chelsea to slip up at the moment. But right there, you guys can see. They're playing against Burnley. They're going to win that game. And look at Burnley right there. Just devastating result. 0-2-7. But still, we are three points away from, uh, from, from Chelsea. It is going to be a long, long season to go. But I still hopeful that we are going to make this good season out of it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in a bit.